right, welcome to the show. Subscribe at kevinmd.com slash podcast to get CME for this episode by clicking on the CME link in the show notes. Today, we welcome back Olivia Ong. She's a pain and rehabilitation medicine physician in Australia, where it is currently two in the morning now. So thank you, Olivia, for joining me. Her most recent article is the first time I walked again after a spinal cord injury. Olivia, welcome back to the show. Thanks for having me again, Kevin. So Olivia's been on, like you said before, go to kevinemmy.com slash podcast to hear her story in prior episodes. But today, let's talk about your most recent article, The First Time I Walked Again After a Spinal Cord Injury. So tell us about this article. Yeah, I think I was really inspired to write this article for, for you, Kevin MD, because I'm currently writing my memoir and I felt that it's really important to get to just talk about what I've been through. It's been something that I've kind of, like not shared with a lot of people, you know, as us physicians, when bad things happen to us, we just try to push it away. But I think this story is really not mine to keep, it's for to share with people. So I had a spinal cord injury in 2008. Uh, that was when I had a car, I was hit by a car basically on my way to work. So quite a devastating injury, very serious. I ended up having a L1, L2 dislocation in my back and with L2 bus vertebrae fracture and quadriquina syndrome. So that's, I mean, a lot of things there, but it's actually, it just means that I became a paraplegic over like within a second and I was paralyzed from the waist down. I couldn't feel my legs, couldn't move my legs. And I, yeah, the whole experience was very, was, I guess I was in a lot of shock, very surreal. But I think when I, after the, you know, the whole acute injury happened, I had a lot of time to unpack things mm -hmm. in the rehabilitation hospital. I had time to think about what truly mattered to me, what I really wanted to do in my life. And also I cannot um, forget, obviously, the emotions that came with it, the five stages of grief. That's uh, essentially what um, happened with the spinal cord injury. But I guess I wanted to um, just share that, you know, it wasn't um, doom and gloom mm -hmm. uh, because I had the opportunity probably a year after my injury to relocate to Carlsbad, California. So I'm like, you know, I'm sure you know where Carlsbad is. Sure. That's Lego. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was an amazing place to relocate. Um, yeah. Southern California is amazing. Close to San Diego, also close to LA. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, I had the opportunity to spend three years there to relearn to walk again. And amazing uh, experiences. I think that was when I was indoctrinated into the American culture. Um, I loved it very much. My fr my dear friends who I still keep in contact with, they've all had spinal cord injuries and they welcomed me with open arms. They, you know, yeah, they invited me to parties, Thanksgiving, Halloween, which we don't celebrate in Australia, but you guys obviously celebrated in a very different way yeah. <laughs> and obviously Christmas parties and, and everything. And I also met, attended lots of um, football games, mm -hmm. uh, the Chargers. I mean, Chargers was, I guess, attached to yeah. San Diego. So I got to watch a lot of matches. I think there was sure. Broncos as well. So lots of good moments there. And what really was interesting was like, I thought that, you know, I'll just go in there, have one mission was just to walk and then just go home back to Australia. But I didn't realize the friendships I made was was so important. Actually helped me heal, heal from the injury itself, not just physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually. So I think I just wanted to kind of share that with, with the, your audience. Um, and I guess the most important thing was I just learned to be kinder to myself. And sure. every little win I had every day, whether it was a big toe moving or I walked a little bit more, yeah, that, that made, you know, I just celebrated every single one. So I think just, yeah, that, that was my, my experience in a nutshell, but yeah, we can definitely chat about it. <laughs> sure. So during that rehabilitation journey, which took, of course, several years, I think mm -hmm. one of the first things that you mentioned is that you had so much to unpack and before mm -hmm. this tragic accident, you were, I assume, a very, very busy physician training and a very linear path, but all of a sudden that stopped so suddenly and gave you a lot of time to think. What what was that like? Like, what did you think about during that time you were re rehabilitating? Yeah, it's quite interesting when you have a lot of time to yourself, you 
have time to reflect on the good things and suddenly bad things. More of the bad things in life, actually, because mm -hmm. at that point in time, I was, you know, obviously grieving through the loss of my mobility, my independence. You know, I went from someone who, you know, very high functioning physician, uh, able body, running around. I was teaching aerobics classes at that time, you know, very <laughs> obviously high level and dancing a lot. And I, I couldn't do those activities anymore. Yeah. It robbed, it, I just felt, you know, like I was angry. I was really angry. Like I was only 28 when this happened. Like, you mm -hmm. can imagine as a 28 year old with life ahead of me. And yeah, I, I was really angry at the driver who hit me. He was a 92 year old fellow with dementia. So mm -hmm. yeah, just be careful about who you let to the road, mm -hmm. <laughs> especially people with dementia. And yeah, all I was just bargaining, you know, with God, like, please give me some kind of chance to you know, walk again. And I will, when, when you do that for me, I will do everything for you. Lots of things like that. And then obviously the sadness, the crying, the, the tears. And I also reflected on the good things because I was going on, oh, because I'm a Christian. So I, I was thanking God for saving my life because mm -hmm. I could have died. Right. And then all, all of this wouldn't have, you know, kind of ensued and, and everything and all that. Yeah. And I, I think I there was, I think, the first time I started to be in touch with my own voice. I mean, mm -hmm. we like hearing myself, I guess, you know, the last couple, you know, last couple of years before the accident, I was so busy, so focused, busy at work. I didn't have time to hear my own voice. Sure, sure. I mean, I didn't even have time to go to the bathroom, let alone mm -hmm. hear my own voice. You know, it's one of those things, right? So, yeah, it gave me a chance to get to know myself better, see the darkness the dark side, and also the good side in, in me, I guess, in that experience. You said you spent three years in San Diego at the Spinal Cord Injury Recovery Center. Mm -hmm. Give us a little glimpse about what your life was like there during that time. Yeah, I just want to uh, probably touch on the first time I went into the gym. I mean, I've been to America quite a lot of times as a tourist. Yeah. But obviously this time I had a, one goal in mind, which is like to walk again. And this place is not your, you know, UX is not your usual kind of rehab place. The moment I entered that the gym, there was upbeat music. There was trainers with people with spinal cord injuries, just bantering, like as if they were good friends. Mm. So I think obviously as an Australian, I'll be like, well, that's a, that's a big shout. Cause for us, we're not like that, unfortunately. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that was the thing, the camaraderie between the trainers and the, the, the clients. The, just, I felt positive vibe the moment I went in. So every day I worked out in Project Walk five hours each day, okay. uh, Monday to Friday. So quite intensive. So I will work out for a few hours in the morning and a few hours in the afternoon and I'll just hang out in Starbucks. I mean, there's nowhere else I'm hang out with. Yeah. Starbucks or eat sushi or Costco. Kind of That was kind of my life then. <laughs> and nothing wrong with Starbucks. I love mocha yeah. frappuccino still very much. And yeah, so that was essentially my life Monday to Fridays. And then on the weekends, I'll hang out with the other clients with spinal cord injuries. And sometimes the trainers will invite us for lunch or dinner. We'll hang out. So I had a really rich life of friendships, new friendships that I never thought that I would ever make. Like I will be, it's quite interesting. I'll be exercising on the bike and the person next to me will be like, some guy from Mexico who used to be a cartel. I know it's mm. like, you never will expect things like you're working out next to a cartel guy. Mm. I mean, that's how he got his injury. He was shot at the back by sure. another rival member. Oh, that's what he tells me. And I'm like, okay, that's that's interesting. So I, I, meet, I met very interesting people like, you know, there was Rico, very interesting. And then there was a few others who, you know, who are very, has very interesting life stories. And yeah, so I think that was amazing. And I'll never forget them. You know, the, these these people help me find myself in a way. The trainers, the the clients. Yeah. Yeah. So that 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 aspect of community and and, yes. and that social aspect is certainly, I'm sure, so powerful. And um, not mm. only I'm sure that they help you get through difficult times, but you also help them get through difficult times. Exactly. And I'm sure that people have, you know, recovering from a spinal cord injury. Not only is it challenging, but it is also a lengthy recovery as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just want to talk a bit about the 
the spinal cord injury itself, it's, you know, I did, I learned about it because I started my first year of physiatry or rehabilitation medicine training yeah. when the accident happened. So I knew what spinal cord injury, the rehab bit at least entails, but until you live through it yourself, it's a different story because yeah. I realized that, oh, bladder and bowels, like so such a uh, topic, but you know, stuff that I had to kind of like learn to manage on my own. There's been awkward moments where I had accidents and my mm-hmm. husband's kind of have to help. Awkward moments like that. But we we both of us navigated through that. And well, my, my friends in, in, in Project Walk have been, been through their own dramas of and stories about it. And they share their experiences as well. So so I'm not alone there. And I think the for me, the most devastating bit was the fact that I couldn't walk. I mean, I mm-hmm. could, you know, relearn to manage my bladder, my bowels, but... The fact that I couldn't walk at the point in time when I started Project Walk was what was what really, really angered me or made me sad the most. But now that I've relearned to walk again, I spent three years there and I relearned to walk and I'm very grateful for that. But yeah, I have to admit that once I've been through the experience of the spinal cord injury, the physiatry exams weren't that hard mm. <laughs> because the questions they ask is like, oh, how, you know, this person with spinal cord injury went through this problem or this person with brain injury went through that problem and I'm like yeah I think I, I kind of know how to answer this without reading the textbook sure. so yeah so I, I think that's a very unique perspective of you know how you can you know everything you that we've been through in life there's always wisdom and learnings from it so that was my wisdom and learning from that experience with the spinal cord injury so after you recovered you mentioned you took mm. the physiatry boards what are you doing now? <laughs> Tell us about how you're doing today. Well, at the moment, I'm currently um, writing my memoir, so I'm really excited about it. I'm doing a lot of speaking. I'm quite passionate about burnout and doctors' well-being, so I'm doing a lot of speaking and coaching and mentoring in that area, so I'm, I'm really excited. And yeah, and I'm still working as a uh, rehabilitation and pain physician. And uh, pain. the reason why I, I'm still doing a lot of pain medicine work is because of my experience in Project Walk. I just want to relate to, I lost two friends in Project Walk from an accidental opioid overdose. Mm -hmm. So they were taking opioids and a few other medications, which devastated me because I knew these two people. They were very young. They were in their 20s. And I told myself, if I can make a difference in the future in in the medical world, I will want to do pain medicine because this is, I can help people like that. And that's why I did. That's how I ended up doing another board exams. As crazy as it sounds, I did another board set of board exams um, in pain medicine. Um, and I'm still practicing as a pain medicine physician as well now. Um, really enjoy my practice and helping more and more people through um, you know persistent pain and managing it as best as they can. So I'm, I'm pretty, I have a full life um, right now. I've got two young kids and you know, that probably keeps up. Keeps me busy as it is already. Yeah. So tell us how your experience learning how to walk again, how does that influence how you take care of patients today? Yeah, I've because I been through that live experience, now I'm a lot more patient with my patients. Mm-hmm. I used to be very abrupt before my accident because I was, you know, I had a lot of work to do. So I was very abrupt with patients. Now having been through a spinal cord injury, I'll take the time to listen. And I think sometimes that's all what patient what that's all what patients really want from us is just to spend a little bit extra time listening to them and also asking about what really matters to them. I don't think we not that we don't want to do that. We don't have the time as physicians to do that. So I think that's that's really key. So I think that's one of the learn things I learned from my experience would be compassionate listening or empathetic listening. And the other thing was to I guess, have a better understanding of where they're coming from rather than just talking about, just treating them as a diagnosis, as a medical issue to deal with. It's Or they have medical issue to deal with. It's more surrounding, seeing them as a human being, not, I guess, as a diagnosis or problem to solve. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you mentioned that you're a speaker and a coach as well. So tell us the lessons that you want to pass on to people that you coach that you learn from your journey. Yeah, because I think throughout my journey to walk again, I had to coach myself through it. How like about my, my own mindset, how I could shift that to 
kind of relearn to walk again because it's not easy because every day you don't know what you expect and you may kind of end up being as good as you get which is not you know not much progress mm -hmm. so I had to coach myself through it so I think the the thing that I want to kind of the the mantra or statement that I want to kind of impart to the audience will be you are your own best coach literally you are you have the abilities in you to coach yourself through it um, amidst hard times good even like growth times good times I see when you're growing that's the good times so yeah definitely you are your own best coach and you are your own best healer Th those are the two main learning points that I've get, gained from my own experience and as a coach right now yeah we're talking to Olivia Ong. She's a pain and rehabilitation medicine physician in Australia. Today's Kevin MD article is the first time I walked again after a spinal cord injury. Olivia, as always, will end with your take-home messages that you want to leave with the Kevin MD audience. Yeah, I think my take-home message will be just be your own best friend. As as simple as it sounds, I know inter intellectually it sounds really easy, but hard to do. But I think that's the message. No matter what happens, you... You know, you li listen to your own voice, your own inner voice, and be your own best friend. Yeah. Olivia, once again, thank you so much for sharing your story time and insight. Thanks again for coming back on the show. All right. Thank you for having me again.